Africa is a continent of great potential and promise. It is endowed with rich natural resources such as large landmass, wildlife, lakes, rivers, breathtaking tourism destinations, to name but a few. However, due to the climatic and historical factors as well as governance challenges, there has been low investment in certain areas, particularly the arid and semi-arid lands. The IGAT region comprises of eight member states and covers about 5.2 million square kilometers, of which about 70% is classified as arid and semi-arid. The region is further characterized by recurrent droughts and unpredictable rainfall patterns receiving less than 600 millimeters of rainfall annually. Over the years, the droughts have been increasing in severity, frequency and their impacts on the affected communities. This is one of the issues around which the IGAT Secretariat is rallying member states, development partners and non-state actors. Drought has been with us um, for a very long time. In the last 40 years, I think we have had uh, like about eight or nine droughts. Uh, the first three or so have had a span between them of about 10 years each. Uh, the, the later ones have had a span of uh, five years in between. Uh, then that span got reduced to like about two years. Now it is so cyclic, it is perennial. In 2011, as part of this gloomy trend, the Igat region experienced the worst drought in many years, which claimed hundreds of lives in Djibouti, Ethiopia, Kenya, Somalia, and Sudan. The consequences were felt across the region and beyond. In 2011, uh, the drought was uh, rough. Millions of livestock died. They were killed by lack of water and pasture. Uh, there was famine in uh, many parts of that region, many countries. And uh, m uh, hundreds of people uh, fleed the area from the, from the drought. It was very rough indeed. It is extremely disturbing that these loss of lives and livelihoods took place in the 21st century. This region of Africa is not the only one that has a drought, or the region of the world that has drought. There are many other areas of the, of the world that have drought, but they don't suffer the same uh, problems like we do. The drought of 2011 for me was a wake-up call. With determination to address the devastating phenomenon of recurrent droughts and related environmental concerns in a sustainable manner, the heads of state and government of the IGAD region convened a summit in Nairobi in September 2011, which called for the urgent introduction of strategies, policies and programs. Our heads of states uh, made a political declaration and they said uh, droughts shall never turn into famine again in the Horn of Africa and they uh, bestowed the responsibility of operationalizing uh, that decision on the IGAT Secretariat. And since then, since then, we have been doing various programs and various activities uh, just to ensure that uh, we live up to the operationalization of that political decision. Uh, IGAT uh, is leading a very strong and intensive uh, advocacy to uh, mobilize all the stakeholders, member states, uh, UN agencies, uh, international community all over, non-state actors, to mobilize all uh, these actors uh, in favor of the implementation of this uh, initiative. Following an inclusive and participatory process, ICA developed a strategy known as Drought Disaster Resilience and Sustainability Initiative, IDRISI. From Idrisi, member states developed country programming papers and regional programming papers, which are mechanisms that provide a strategic direction and operational framework for resilience-enhancing policies and investments. The country programming papers have been instrumental in guiding investment plans and facilitating the mobilization of resources. This is evidenced by the engagement of a number of development partners in the development and funding of drought resilience projects in different countries in the region coordinated by the ECAD Secretariat. In an effort to translate the regional strategy, member states and development partners have mobilized resources to implement IDRISI. 
The heads of states are now leading by example, implementing various initiatives to end drought emergencies in their country. Kenya is undertaking irrigation projects in various parts of the country, including Galana Kulalu Food Security Program Model Farm that is expected to cover over 10,000 acres out of the 1 million acres for the entire project. The model farm, among others, is expected to produce between 80 and 100 bags of maize per acre yearly. In Karamoja, northern Uganda, there are opportunities for growing crops to provide food and feed to improve livelihoods. We have established uh, a pilot irrigation scheme for the community. And what you are seeing at the background is their work. We decided to come up with a, this kind of project basically because we now had an opportunity of the dam that was constructed by government. The establishment of Areshek Dam has been very beneficial and very instrumental to us in Napak district. As the changes come, this, the government brings uh, the dam here. All of us now entered. Those people who are hunting, they also joined there. So that is why. We change now the living of this community. People now, they have known about planting these vegetables. Government has ensured actually that the water is for both animals and persons. So we have the traps down there. They water their animals peacefully. They don't have to go for miles now. In Ethiopia, the government and development partners invested billions of dollars in the Productive Safety Net program to shift millions of chronically food insecure rural people from recurrent emergency food aid to a more secure and predictable and largely cash-based form of social protection. The government is also working with several development partners to ensure her citizens are more resilient to shocks by linking smallholder farmers to school feeding. They provide access to seeds, planting materials, and access to loans from microfinance institutions. The produce is then bought from the farmers through cooperative unions to feed school children. In South Sudan, the government and other partners is creating resilience programs that will help ensure that families can feed their own children. In Somalia, the government, working with various development partners, is taking steps aimed at economically improving the livelihoods of the people, especially the pastoralists. The anticipated success of this program is hinged on its recognition of the need to address the resource-based conflict and the important role of livestock and agriculture in the economy of Somalia. Several UN agencies and other international non-governmental organizations are implementing food in exchange for work programs helping communities to tackle issues such as sanitation while constructing dams and wells to ensure access to water. Some important lessons could be learned from several private enterprises across the Horn of Africa that are taking up initiatives that were considered a reserve of governments by providing the much-needed preventive livestock vaccinations as opposed to waiting for an outbreak. Sidai Africa, a social enterprise operating in the pastoral communities of Kenya, is one such organization. There are hundreds of success stories spread across the region. Stories of people, organizations, both state and non-state agencies implementing unique innovations that are slowly but truly building resilience among a people frequently hard hit by ravaging perennial droughts. The question now is to invest differently in order to scale out the good practices which were development through a multiple partnership across the region to ensure that the benefits reach millions of people that would guarantee a sustainable development. There is nothing really impossible under this sun if you are willing to go an extra mile. The next drought is coming. It could be worse. But with great lessons learned from each and every one of these initiatives, the Horn of Africa can triumph. These will not happen unless all of us take action to make the much-desired difference and continue doing things differently together. <music>